Oh, y'all, let's talk about today's topic, which is going to be how we can use equations of state to help solve safety related problems for chemical engineers. And uh, this turns out to be really important because as chemical engineers, we deal with hazardous chemicals and also we deal with hazardous situations. And one of those key hazardous situations is risk of fire. So we've got to uh, think about how we might deal with this. So first off, just to recap, what is an equation of state good for? Uh, you will recall it is good for finding physical properties for a, uh, a substance. Um, and in this case, we're only still talking about pure substances. We're going to be talking about mixtures soon, but right now it is all about the pure substances. So an equation of state does a good job of telling you the physical properties, such as the density of a pure substance. And I want you to note in this class uh, and in your tools, such as Aspen Hysis, uh, we are concentrated on liquids and vapors. Those are the things we can work out the properties of. There are specialized equations of state that deal much more specifically in solids. And those are the sort of things you might run into if you take the polymers class or advanced material science. Um, so that's still a valid thing, but we don't tend to concentrate quite as much on the solids in this course. And uh, neither does your property modeling software that you run into uh, most commonly. Uh, second thing you do, you use this equation of states to complete your energy or entropy balance. Remember hugs, enthalpy, internal energy, entropy, and it gives free energy. Uh, and of course, finally, we use equations of state to determine vapor liquid phase equilibrium. Again, we could use specialized equations of state to do, vapor, uh, to do solid uh, phase equilibrium, but we don't concentrate on that right here, right now. That's taken care of elsewhere. And again, equations of state are really best for pure substances. We'll use a different approach uh, that I prefer more for mixtures. So what does this all have to do with safety? How is this connected? Well, there's uh, two big places it's connected. One is if we think about the properties of pure liquids, um, it is uh, a hazard arises from when temperature goes up in an enclosed space, which means then pressure and volume also try to increase. Um, and so that is a way that we have to pay attention to safety so we don't blow up pressure vessels. Uh, and that's a thing that can happen. Uh, so equations of state are very important in that setting, and we've kind of thought about it a little in that way already. The new one I'm going to introduce today is how phase equilibrium turns out to be extremely important uh, for uh, fire safety in terms of what's known as the lower flammability limit, or LFL. So what does uh, vapor liquid equilibrium have to do with fire safety? And uh, to answer that question, we've got to think about this thing that maybe you haven't thought about a lot before, which is what is it that actually burns when something is on fire? And, well, I mean, we know a lot of things that are flammable. You know, wood is flammable, charcoal briquettes are flammable, gasoline is flammable. Uh, let's zoom in on what's known as the fire triangle. This is a good safety thing to know about. Maybe you've experienced uh, this before in something uh, like Scouts. Uh, but as a chemical engineer, you should know about the fire triangle. Uh, you usually need three things to get a fire. And there's some exceptions, but this is the big one. You need a fuel, right? So like a hydrocarbon, like gasoline. You need heat or an ignition source, right? So a, uh, a match, a spark, um, something like that. And then you need uh, an oxidizer, which is usually, we most often worry about oxygen from the air, but it can have come from other sources. And when you have all three of those things, you have a fire hazard. In fact, you probably have a fire, um, but you at least have the hazard of the fire. And uh, what we're gonna focus on right now is how that fuel and that oxidizer, that oxygen come together. You need enough oxygen to be mixed with enough fuel that a flame can be sustained. And it turns out in general, that doesn't work for solids and it doesn't even mostly work for liquids. So to give you an example of this, I did a highly sophisticated experiment with a candle. So 
So we're going to watch this candle um, partially in slow motion, but initially at re uh, regular speed right now. So you'll notice that a candle has a wick. And I don't know if you've ever thought about why a candle should have a wick. But if you have tried to light a candle in the wax part, you will uh, notice that it doesn't just catch. You need to light it by the wick. You can't just light up wax. You can melt wax, but you can't just light up wax. So what is that wick doing? Well, in part, you can see that it is drawing the liquid wax uh, up uh, to spread it out a bit. But actually, what is also going on is something with the vapor. Remember, every liquid has a vapor pressure. Watch this carefully. We're in slow motion now. And what can I do with the vapor trail and a fresh source of ignition? It goes fast, so pay attention. Here we go. And again, this is in slow motion. So you can see, boom. That flame didn't touch that wick again. It lit through the vapor trail. And that's because what's mostly burning is vapor. Because that is what is able to be well enough mixed with oxygen to sustain a flame. And you're like, well, wax isn't that volatile. Well, that's why it's got to uh, be quite warm in the first place. But usually when you are worried in many, many cases about something being flammable, at least to start, the flame is at the vapor liquid interface and it is the vapor that is in equilibrium with the liquid. So remember all liquids have a vapor pressure above them. It is that fraction of the liquid that has vaporized, even though we're below its boiling point, uh, that is the thing that is burning. Okay, so let's talk about that. This finally brings us to today's safety problem. So for a set of common, well-known flammable liquids, I want you to first look up the lower flammability limit. This will be phrased as a uh, percent, and it's equivalent to the mole fraction in air, so the vapor mole fraction, that <clears throat> of this substance that you need for a flame to be sustained. Okay, and you're gonna pick one of these. Uh, I want the whole class to mix it up and pick different things. Uh, so for this, I want you to go look up what the lower flammability limit is. There's also an upper flammability limit. We don't need to worry about that quite as much right now. Uh, but so what is that vapor phase mole fraction at which this stuff can sustain a flame? It can effectively be a fuel. And, uh, and if you need an assumption, let's assume we're at atmospheric pressure, one atmosphere, uh, 1.01325 bar. Um, and this is something that you should be able to find in the material safety sheet for that substance. So this is, this is where you can look that up. Um, it'll also be listed in lots of uh, common spaces such as chemical suppliers, heck, even Wikipedia. So then, second, after you know the LFL, so we'll get those all listed down, um, I want you to check what is today's outdoor temperature. And then I want you to imagine that we've had a spill. Uh, so somebody spilled a large container of this stuff outside. At today's temperature, should we be concerned that the vapor that is in equilibrium with the liquid that is spilled on the sidewalk uh, is flammable or should we not be concerned? And to do this calculation, um, I'd like to assume that the uh, Peng-Robinson equation of state is a valid description of the behavior of our fluid. Um, even if it's not a perfect description, it should actually be pretty good for all of these in this particular circumstance. So let's pull that out, put the proper um, constants in place, and figure out what vapor pressure we expect to be in equilibrium uh, with a 100% liquid of one of these compositions uh, at today's temperature. And that's the problem. Thanks a lot.